Hello! Good day! Good day to you in the Viking tongue! I am indeed Gwagi, and I am the son of Magnar. Now today I am here to tell you an old story, and this story is called The Farmer and the Elves. And it is about a farmer, of course, who has some strange things going on in a barn, in an outbuilding. But first of all, you know, before I tell you the story, and it has a gripping and interesting ending, I was walking around on my borders of my land with my shield and axe, and on the far distant western border there is a large hedge, and in the hedge I heard a rustling and some strange noises, and I thought to myself, I wonder if that could be an elven person, or indeed even a troll. I did not stay around for long, but then suddenly my friend and Viking Olaf jumped out. You know, he was tricking me. And this reminded me of the old story of the farmer and the elf as I put my shield down on the wall. Now, many years ago, in the times, the age of the Angles and later the Angle Saxons, and of course, after that, the Vikings, there was a farmer. And like many farmers, well, he was relatively poor. He had an outbuilding and a nice longhouse. And he had some rather nice clothes for special occasions as weddings and going to see, or see a thane or an earl. And it was the time of the year. It was autumn when the crops had to be chopped down and brought in. And you may be asking, well, what sort of crops did this farmer have? Well, indeed, he was a farmer of wheat and barley. And for days and days, whilst the sun was hot, he was scything of the wheat and the barley. And then he was stacking it in piles, ready to be collected on his horse and cart. He had enough money to own a horse, and he had enough money to have an old cart. And, you know, after some weeks of scything down the wheat, and scything down the fields of barley, he was ready to bring it into his barn to finish the thrashing and to get the seeds, the barley and the wheat, out of, well, the chaff, you could say. And so, one fine morning, it was most probably a Thursday, day of Thunar, the god of thunder, he got up early at dawn and he got his horse ready and his cart and he started stacking in, you know, the, the uh, bales of wheat until his cart was full. And then he got on the cart front and got his horse going, Nay, lad, nay! And he got it to his barn and unloaded it. And he did this throughout the day. In fact, he did about half a dozen trips. It was a very long and tiring day. And he was getting ready, thinking, well... You know, I've got a few hours left before the sun comes down and it is dusk. I will thrash the wheat. So he started to do this, but he got tired quickly and uh, thought, I'll, I'll go inside and see my wife and get some food and supper. As he was very hungry by that time. And all day his wife, his wife, had been slaving over a hearth in his longhouse and an old cauldron and made a very nice stew, of a good broth. And he ate the stew, but then he realised that he left his favourite axe in the barn. So he went up, walked across the courtyard, to the place where his outbuilding was. But he heard some strange noises, some strange voices. Come on now, come on, let's, let's, let's thrash in the corn, let's thrash the, the wheat, let's thrash the old... Barley! And they were singing magical songs. And he listened for a few minutes outside. The two barn doors were shut. And he thought, oh, I'm going to find out who this is. I will very quickly open the door and surprise him. And then go and grab my axe. It was his favourite axe he left in there. In an old log. And so very quickly he opened the door. And what do you think he found inside? Do you think he found a pair of elves? Stacking the corn for him. No, indeed, they had vanished so quickly and disappeared. There was not to be seen. And half on the floor was a pile of thresh wheat 
and the other half a massive pile of unthreshed wheat. And he thought, well, this is mighty strange. I, I swear I heard voices. And he went back home across the yard to his longhouse and he told his wife, hey up, he says, uh, I've just seen something and heard something rather strange indeed. I was out there near the barn, the outbuilding, and I heard these strange voices talking and chattering away. But as soon as I opened the door, they had vanished into thin air. And, you know, his old wife thought, well, you know, Olaf's been drinking too much ale again in the daytime. After all, in those times, you could not rely on the water so much. You had to drink a good weak beer or a medium beer to keep you going in the day. They were not lucky like us. They did not have tea or coffee, which I do love in the modern world. And so, you know, he told this to his wife and she, she thought it was a load of rubbish. And so the next day, the very same thing happened. He got up. It was a Friday, Freya's day, the day of love. That's a good day to go dating. And um, he spent all day with his horse and cart, putting on piles of wheat on the back of the cart and steering them back in the wagon with the horse leading. And he did, you know, eight trips that day. He worked even harder. And, you know, he was going to go and thrash some more wheat again. But he thought, oh, uh, I'm too tired of longing the beard this day out, and I want my supper. And again, all day, his wife had been slaving over the hearth, over a cauldron, making more broth, some more stew. It had all kinds of ingredients, from peas to parsnips, and even a bit of meat. Yeah, it was a good day. They had meat on the go. And again, he thought, well, I'm going to go back to the old outbuilding and see if I can catch the mischievous creatures, the elves, thrashing my corn. Because actually, he really loved thrashing corn. And it wasn't corn, of course, it was wheat. He didn't have corn until much later. And so, you know, he went up, he crept up to the barn, and again he heard the voices of the elves. He knew it was elves because they were very high-pitched. And he thought to himself, well, there'd be no troll thrashing my corn and helping me out. So it has to be an elf, or two, or three, who knows? And so... Very quickly, he opened the door, and again, the oldish people inside, who was thrashing his corn, thrashing, as you would call it, had disappeared in a flash of lightning. And this was really annoying him by now, because he really wanted to find out who it was, and he could only speculate that it was old. And so he walked back across the yard to get his supper, and again he told his wife, huh, Hey up, duck! An old saying round here, I think there's some elves again thrashing my wheat and thrashing my barley. I do not know what's going on, but I opened the barn door and again they had disappeared in a flash. And so the wife, she was quite a wise old woman, she said, Oh, what you do tomorrow, this is what you do. You go out as normal, but when you finish your last load, unloading the wheat from your cart, you go and hide in the back of the barn and then you'll catch them threshing your wheat. And so he thought to himself, ah, he was long in the beard too. You know, not like his wife though. She was not long in the beard. <laughs> she was not a bearded lady. He thought to himself, well, I would indeed go up and I will go and try to hide in the barn and catch these little oven folk doing what they're doing. And so again, it was Saturday, the day of the Norns, and one of the few days we get named after the Romans, Saturn's day, he spent all day collecting more wheat in his horse and cart. By this time the horse was knackered and wanted a drink. I think you would too, nay. And, um, and after a ninth load, he worked even harder that day. It was about six o'clock at night. He had about three hours of sunlight. He thought, ha ha, I will go and hide in the barn now. And so this is what he did. He crept round the back of the barn and there were some bales of hay from a previous year which he did not manage to feed the animals and he hid behind that. He made a little shelter so he could see what was happening but they could not see him. And whilst he was sitting there, he, he fell asleep. He was very tired after working all week. In those times you had to work all the time to keep your food coming in. And of course you had to pay some of your money from your food to your local earl or to the vein if you did not own the land. 
he was only a poor farmer. And so, you know, he was better off than a slave though. And so, you know, he fell asleep at the back of his barn, his outbuilding. And again he heard the voices singing, singing away some magical oven song. And very suddenly he jumped up and said, Ah, I've got you, I caught you. And at that very minute, one of the elves, who was a little creature, flew in the air. And he noticed something in his hand. It was a tiny little hammer. And again he thought of Dunar, the god of thunder, and his hammer Majonia. And thought, huh, that is mighty strange for an elf to have a hammer. And just as he was thinking about what to do, the little elf threw the hammer and it hit him smack in the middle of the head and knocked him out cold. And again, a lot of the wheat was threshed. And there was a little pile of unthreshed wheat, for these elves were very fast workers. And, you know, after a, a couple of hours of waking up from being unconscious, from being smacked in the head, and he had a big bruise and a big bump, he went in to see his wife. He said, wife, I've been attacked by these oven creatures. I did what you say, I hid in the back of the building, the outbuilding. And I surprised them when they were threshing my wheat, a job I love to do. And suddenly one of them had a hammer. It was flying in the air somehow magical. And the hammer hit me in the middle of the head and knocked me out. And again thinking the next day or Sunday, he thought, ah, I'll go out and try to catch them at it again. But alas, they did not turn up. And it was said that never again did they turn up to help him thresh the wheat. And many and many a season passed. In fact, it was three seasons, three long summers have passed, and it was exactly to the day when he was threshing wheat, when he suddenly collapsed dead and died. And some say he was struck down by oldish magic. Some say he was just very old in a beard and his time to go had come. The end of the tale. I do hope you like it. Now I must go. I have to go and check on my eastern border now, for I've been to the west, but I've not been to the east to check my borders. And I will grab my shield, just in case I meet some elves, a troll, or indeed some bandits. Goodbye folks, and leave a nice comment, and don't forget, give it a thumbs up.